Hi, am I in the air? going down everybody welcome back to another brand new edition of am i on the air my name is don mega and i am your host and i'm so happy that you're here to join me today to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news television movies non-spoiler reviews you come right here to am i on the air it's season 27 episode 6 and tonight's show is called die when dead we're going to be breaking down the news between september 20th through september the 26th and that's everything going down in the world of entertainment news got a couple movies to talk about non-spoiler a couple tv shows and then we'll get into the news of the week all right um first of all i would like to say congratulations to the WGA, that's right, the Writers Guild of America that has been on strike for five plus months trying to get better situations out there. And a deal has been made. That's correct. Um, everything has been locked and set, and these guys are going to be able to get back to work. So congratulations to the writers. The strike is over, and the writers are getting back to work uh, with better conditions, and that is amazing. So. Now we turn the attention to the actors, right? Uh, SAG. So hopefully they can go ahead and get a deal done rather quickly so we can get all these productions back to business Uh, because everything will still pretty much be halted. I mean, they can start writing, but without the actors, they can't make anything. So let's get this other deal done and let's get our world back the way we need it but congratulations there again to um the wga all right so on the movie side we're going to start off with the new big theatrical movie of the weekend and that is expendables 4 or expend four bowls depending on how you read the poster (laughs) um i was excited for this movie i really really was I'm a fan of this franchise. Yes, it's cheesy. Yes, it's over the top. But that's what it was meant to be, right? Basically, this was an idea from Sylvester Stallone that was like, you know what? Let's take all the great action stars from the 80s and the 90s and let's put them together in an action vehicle. And that first movie, you know, it had Stone Cold Steve Austin and it... uh you know, the second movie had Jean-Claude Van Damme and you had Chuck Norris and Arnold was popping up and Bruce Willis. I mean, it was so cool. Uh, the amount of people they had popping up. I mean, damn Harrison Ford popped up in one of these. Can you, can you believe it? (laughs) So Expendables had its gimmick and it's been a bit, it's been a hot minute since we've had one of these movies. Uh, I love the first movie. I really love the second movie. The second one's my favorite because I'm a big Jean-Claude Van Damme fan and he was the bad guy in the second movie and it was awesome. And the action was just incredible. Expendables 3 took a step down because they went PG-13. They also tried to introduce, you know, quote-unquote new blood to the team, right? Bring in the young crew. But that's not what this franchise was about. This franchise wasn't about bringing in the young crew. It was about the Expendables. It was about the older guys. And uh, I think I thought that was a wrong turn. A couple years have gone by, and now we have Expend Four Bulls, <laughs> the fourth movie in the franchise, where you still don't really have the whole team back. You know, where's Terry Crews at? Um, you know, we were introduced to um, Antonio Banderas' character in the last one, Wesley Snipes. Where are they at? Not here. Watching the trailer, I'm like, looks like there's barely any Sylvester Stallone. And I don't feel like this is a spoiler, but there's barely any Sylvester Stallone. And that's a bummer. He's the lead of The Expendables. How the hell is he barely going to be in this movie? You bring in 50 Cent. You bring in Megan Fox. 
And I'll say this. I mean, I love Megan Fox. She's one of the most beautiful women in the world. Don't mind her being up on my screen. But when you're telling me she's, you know, going to lead a mission with the Expendables, why is she the one leading the mission? <laughs> why is it not Dolph Lundgren? Why is it not Randy Couture? You know, why is it not any of the other Expendables? Why is it her? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, where's Ronda Rousey, right? She was in the last movie. Where is she at? So what I'll say about this movie, because I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, is it's not very good. It's not very good at all. And I was very disappointed because I eat up the cheese. So it's not that I don't get it and I don't understand it. I can eat up the cheese. This movie was beyond that. Um, are there good moments to be had? Yes. There is some really good action in this movie. Uh, some of the fight scenes are great. There are things to like. So I did not hate this movie because of that. But the script is bad. Some of the acting is bad. The way it's edited is bad. They make some weird decisions when they're jumping from scene to scene. Um, it's predictable. I predicted the twist very early on into the movie. There's a couple twists in this movie that I predicted. <laughs> and And called it very early. And that's not good. You shouldn't be able to call something like that very early into the film. So walking out of it, I all I can say is it was just okay. You know, I uh, shout out to my boy Friggins, uh, who who joined us finally and for a movie, and it sucks that this was the movie he joined us for because <laughs> he did not like it at all. Um, but our star scale is the same. Uh he gave it two stars, I'm gonna give it two stars. Um, I agree. This movie is just okay at best. It is definitely the worst of the four movies, and I think they should at this point, I think they should stop this franchise um, unless they get some amazing um, idea, unless, you know, Steven Seagal wants to join the next one. I don't think you you come back to this well anymore, you know, um, maybe do a prequel series on like Amazon Prime or something. But I think we're done here. Um, I will shout out Jason Statham. Jason Statham steals this movie. He gets a lot of screen time in this one, and I thought he did amazing. I really, really appreciated him in this movie, and he really held it together. So shout out to Jason Statham. But at the end of the day, Expendables 4 only gets two out of five stars. All right. Our next movie is a streamer. This was an Hulu original that just came out this weekend, and it's called No One Will Save You. I had known nothing about this movie till a couple of weeks ago when the first trailer dropped. And I watched it, and I was very impressed by the trailer. I loved it. A home invasion movie, except instead of burglars, it's aliens. So an alien breaking into your house, what would you do? This movie is tense. It's... It kind of keeps you on your toes. I loved what they did with the aliens. This movie is led by Caitlin Deaver. You might not know the name, but you probably know her face if you see her. She doesn't say a word of dialogue in this movie. I don't even think there's any dialogue in this movie when I think back on it. She's this little... um uh, anxiety ridden homebody that you know really just stays home all the time she does she barely ever goes out only, only to get food and then go right back home and then this alien invasion happens and she's trying to obviously survive that's the premise here and that's all i'm gonna say um but it is it's it's science fiction it's a thriller it's a horror um it's drama i mean she does an amazing job without any dialogue really Showing you how she's feeling. Um, I thought she killed it. And you know it's only an hour and a half. So they keep it real nice and tight. And it kept me engaged. Without dialogue. Which is very hard to do. And at the end of the day. I really like this movie. So I definitely think you should check it out. I would give this film 3 out of 5 stars. It was really good. Um, and it's now streaming on Hulu. So check out No One Will Save You. All right, over on the TV side, finally we got the new Continental show. This is from the world of John Wick. 
That's right. Remember, this is the spinoff of John Wick about the hotel, the Continental. And this is a prequel series that takes place in the 70s, uh, and it really focuses around a young Winston. Of course, you know Winston from the other John Wick movies uh, played by Ian McShane. This is a young Winston. He's not the owner of the Continental yet. This is his story. Um, we learn that, you know, he's got a brother. We we see that Mel Gibson is the bad guy, and we're just off to the races. This is a three-part miniseries. Only part one has dropped so far. It looks like new episodes will drop on Fridays. So, checked out part one. I really liked it. I really, really liked it. Um, is it as m- amazing as a John Wick movie? No. But... They do some really cool stuff here. There is some really good action. The be opening action scene right in the beginning with um, Winston's brother Frankie is incredible. Um, and who wouldn't love Mel Gibson as the villain here? I mean, he fits in so well. Um, so yeah, so check this out, man. This is this is the early story from the world of John Wick, and this is streaming on Peacock. So go check it out. Part one is now streaming. Part two will be out Friday. Check out the Continental from the world of John Wick. So that's our big news show of the week. And then I checked out the season premiere of American Horror Story. American Horror Story season 12. They're calling this season Delicate. This one here mainly stars Emma Roberts. You got Kim Kardashian in this one. Cara Delevingne. Only the first episode has been out. So I don't have much to go off of. What I will say is this. Used to be a massive fan of American Horror Story. Loved this show so much. In the last couple years, the show has taken a big downturn. I couldn't even finish last season. And I barely finished the season before that. Um, They're just not that great anymore. And I watched this first episode of Delicate. And it wasn't very good. So I feel like we're right down the same path. I mean, not even the season premiere could hook me in. It's a bummer because I love this series. And I feel like I want to watch it just to see where it goes. But this first episode I just thought was very blah. It came off cheesy. I didn't like the way it was filmed. It just didn't have that hook like the earlier seasons did. So we'll, we'll check it out for a couple more episodes and we'll see how it goes. But right now I... Really can't recommend it at this point, even for, you know, hardcore American Horror Story fans. So we'll see how it goes. All right. And then lastly, I just want to say, guys, watch Ahsoka. Oh, dude, episode seven I watched earlier, and it was incredible. This show is on such a roll. The last several episodes have been amazing. I love this show so much, and I'm so sad that next week is the finale. Oh, man, I need this show in my life. I hope it gets another season. I hope we get more. I know we're supposed to get a movie with these characters, but I love it. This is so what I needed from Star Wars right now, and it's so good. And I just wanted to shout it out. So good. That's what I wrote in my notes. Ahsoka, so good. And I just wanted to tell you guys about it again in case you're behind. So there you go. All right, guys, that's what I got. We got Expendables 4 now in theaters Two out of five stars. No one will save you. Uh, Three out of five stars now streaming over on Hulu. Uh, The Continental from the world of John Wick is streaming over on Peacock. American Horror Story Season 12 Delicate is over on Hulu. And you can check out Ahsoka over on Disney+. Plus. All right? There you go. Let's talk box office. Coming in at number 10, it's Oppenheimer. Number 9 is Blue Beetle. Which, by the way, Blue Beetle is now available on VOD, so you could buy or rent it right now. Uh, Number eight is Dumb Money, and that's still in limited release, so glad to see how well it's doing uh, in limited release. Already being number eight, it'll fully release this weekend. Number seven is It Lives Inside. Number six, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. Number five, Barbie. Number four, The Equalizer 3. Number three, A Haunting in Venice. Number two... Expendables 4, that's right, couldn't even make number 1, this is the lowest franchise debut ever for an Expendables movie, when this movie was coming out, everyone predicted it would be the number 1 movie of the weekend, and it only made $8 million and the number 2 spot, so edging it out is the Nun 2, once again, holding down that spot at number 1, so congratulations to the Nun 2, Um, and we'll see what happens this weekend at the box office, because we have Dumb Money, 
We have Saw 10. We have The Creator. So this is a big weekend for movies. I want to see all of them. There's only so much time in the weekend. We'll have to see how it plays out. But definitely The Nun 2 will not be number one anymore. But great, great run there for The Nun. All right, guys, with that out the way, let's switch gears and get into our news of the week. All right, the new film, American Fiction, has pushed its theatrical release date to December. uh, So it'll be in limited release on December 15th and expand into full theaters on December 22nd. Um, The Kill Room, we have the new trailer. Uh, This is the new movie starring Uma Thurman and Samuel L. Jackson. I hope it's a better trailer than the last one because I watched the first trailer to this movie and couldn't even finish the trailer. That never even happens to me. (laughs) I couldn't even sit through two minutes of this trailer. So I hope the new one is better. Uh, We have the new trailer for Fear the Walking Dead for the final season that's coming out here soon. So check that out. Alexander Payne um, is talking about that he is still working on the Reese Witherspoon-led Election 2. That's right. They announced this a while ago. That they were going to do a sequel to Election. And uh, yeah, he is still working on it. So um, keep your fingers crossed if you're waiting on this one. They are trying. The new sci-fi mystery thriller Beacon 23 has been given a new home. Uh, it is going to be an MGM Plus exclusive. As they have officially picked up the new Zach Penn sci-fi mystery thriller series. Starring Lena Headey and Stephen James. So Sounds pretty cool. I like sci-fi. We'll have to check it out. MGM Plus. Slow Horses is coming uh, for season three. It will premiere on December 1st with two new episodes. Colin from Accounts is coming to the U.S. That's right. It is a hit Australian comedy from Colin. A comedy called Colin from Accounts. Uh, starring real life couple Patrick Brommel and Harriet Dyer, and it's going to actually be streaming on Paramount Plus. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lavino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Sam, a self confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's alternate side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing, Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. We have the trailer for In the Fire, which is Amber Heard's new movie. The Underworld TV show is still in the works. We have the trailer for Old Dads, which is the new Netflix comedy starring Bill Burr. It's also his directorial debut. Uh, I like this trailer. I thought it was pretty damn funny, so I'll definitely be checking out this movie when it drops. Um, You know what's funny is Saw X, they did a little parody video of the Nicole Kidman AMC opening video. And AMC actually demanded that this get pulled down. Do we not have a sense of humor anymore, AMC? I mean, really? This was a fun, fun parody as an advertisement for a movie. And you guys demanded they take it down? So stupid. So, so stupid. Um, But they did. They complied. So if you haven't seen it, That sucks because it's a really funny video, but man, I can't believe AMC did that. The Covenant, which was the Jake Gyllenhaal, Guy Ritchie movie, is now streaming on Prime Video. So if you missed it in theaters, you can check it out over on Prime Video. Lionsgate has announced that they are going to be releasing John Woo's new movie, Silent Night, uh, in December. So pretty cool there. We haven't seen a John Woo movie in quite some time. So definitely be looking forward to checking out Silent Night in December. Future Kenneth Branagh Huku Puro movies have been teased by producers because there's always my murders to take care of. Um, so yeah, so we've had three movies already in this universe, and it looks like they're looking at more. So there you go. Um, let's see here. Crime Nation. The CW has ordered a new true crime anthology series. Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, which is a prequel movie, um, is going to have a connection to the 2019 remake 
So pretty cool there. John Lithgow was in the 2019 remake and his character's younger version is who is in Bloodlines. So I liked the little connection there. Sicario 3 is still happening with Benicio Del Toro returning. So I know a lot of people have been waiting for another Sicario. So that's pretty cool there. Meg 2 is actually going to start streaming this week over on Max. So I love it. I love these streamers getting these movies hot out the movie theaters. So yeah, Meg 2 swimming, swimming on to uh, Max this week. Um, the Toxic Avenger, we have the reboot, remember, coming um, with uh, Peter Dinklage. And the early reactions praised the remake for being bonkers, super gory, um, and a lot of people really loved it coming out of the film festival. So I love the idea of it being super gory, man. I was never a super big fan of the original Toxic Avenger, but I'm hoping they did something fun here. So I'll definitely check this out when it hits. We have the trailer for VHS 85, which of course is the latest in the franchise of VHS, which should be coming to Shudder and AMC+. Plus. Um, Saw 10 producers already have plans for another sequel, so there we go. Man, more Saw, let's get it. Bumper in Berlin Season 2, the Pitch Perfect spinoff has been canceled by Peacock, even though it was already renewed. See, here we go again with these studios reversing their renewal decisions again. They're trying to blame this one on the strike, which is kind of funny because two days later after this news, the strike ended. So can we get back to this? You know, will they maybe reverse the reverse decision? I don't know, but I did really like the show. It was super funny. Um, I enjoyed it a lot and was very happy that it was going to get a second season. So definitely bummed to see that the uh, rug has been pulled out from underneath us as has been canceled by Peacock. We have the season three trailer for Upload. I love this show. The first two seasons are excellent. I can't wait for this third season. It comes out in October. This is on Prime Video. It's a sci-fi comedy. It's really, really funny. If you've never seen Upload, please take the time and go watch it. It's awesome. It's a really smart concept, and I love it. So really excited for Season 3 dropping, so check out that trailer. Um, Robert Rodriguez says he is still working on the sequel to We Can Be Heroes, which was his little kid superhero movie that he did on Netflix, and he is still working on that sequel, so hopefully sooner rather than later. We have the Doom Patrol Season 4 Part 2 trailer previewing the final episodes of the DC show. That's right. You know, we had Part 1 months ago, and then it just stopped. And we're like, where the hell's the rest of the episodes? Finally coming out in October, but this is the end of the season and the end of the run for Doom Patrol. So as we wrap up the show. We have the trailer for Griselda, which is uh, Sofia Vergara as a mob boss. So check that out. It's a biographical crime drama. Uh, the Santa Claus Season 2 Disney Plus is coming. And uh, we got a new poster for it there. We also have the trailer for All of Us Strangers, which is Andrew Scott and Paul Mescal's new romantic drama. Mean Girls the Musical is shifting from streaming to theaters. That's right. This was supposed to be a Paramount Plus exclusive. It is now going to go to theaters. Arnold Schwarzenegger's new movie is going to be a return to hardcore action. The movie is called Breakout. I love it. Let's get it. Thank you. Let's get the breakout. Deadpool 3 director says the sequel will pay tribute to the 20th Century Fox era of Marvel. I love it. We had a feeling this was going to tie in with that. And uh, let's get it, man. Very excited for Deadpool 3. We have the trailer for Showdown at the Grand Hotel. Um, or no, show, sorry, Showdown at the Grand. Uh, there is no hotel. Terrence Howard and Dolph Lundgren star in this action comedy. Very weird pairing. Dolph Lundgren and Terrence Howard. Okay. Uh, Ang Lee's son, Mason Lee, trained for five years for the lead role in the Bruce Lee biopic. So I love the dedication, man. That's pretty awesome there. Amazon Prime video to add commercial breaks. And they will also offer an ad-free tier at an additional charge. So they're getting on they're getting on it with like every other streamer, right? Let's give you an offer with ads and without ads. So damn you Amazon, but supposedly this won't start till next year, so you don't have to worry about it yet. 
Congratulations to the King of Queens. Kevin James and Leah Remini were uh, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the show a couple days ago. I love King and Queens. Like when people say to me, what's your favorite show? What's your favorite sitcom ever? It, my answer is King and Queens. I love this show. I just relate very well to it. I love Kevin James in this show. I love Leah Remini in this show. I love the way they play off of each other. It went for nine seasons. It's super hilarious. It's a show that no matter how many times I've seen every episode, I still laugh my ass off at it. Um, it streams on Peacock right now, so if you've never seen it, give it a watch. It is a little dated, obviously, because um, it's been a long time, but it's such a fun, fun show. So happy 25th anniversary. I love you guys. Kiefer Sutherland is Captain Queeg meets Colonel Jessup in the trailer for the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. Uh, this will be coming soon. A new America's Got Talent spinoff has been revealed. Um, yeah, it's going to be called Fantasy League, where the judges will uh, have teams of acts, and then they will compete against each other to see which judge has the best act on their Fantasy League. Now, it looks like Sofia Vergara will sit this season out, and... Um, Melanie B will return. She used to be a judge on the show years ago, so kind of cool to to see her come back for this. But it is a spinoff. No release date set yet, but it'll probably be kind of mid-season. NCIS Sydney is coming soon, so keep your eye out on that over on CBS. Friday Night Smackdown, for all you wrestling fans, is going to be leaving Fox, and it will return to the USA Network in October of 2024. Plus, WWE will be getting four primetime specials on NBC next year as well, too. Uh, no word yet on where um, Monday Night Raw or NXT will wind up, as it looks like their deals with the USA Network are up right now as well. So we'll see. Sounds like it might go to streaming, um, but we'll keep you posted on that. All right, some new release dates. The Untitled Smile sequel. Yes, we're getting a sequel to Smile because it made a ton of money. It's going to come out October 18th, 2024. And then that Mean Girls musical we just talked about, switching from streaming to theatrical, is going to hit theaters on January 12th, 2024. So there you go there. That's pretty awesome. Um, Usher is going to perform at the Super Bowl 58 halftime show in February. Very cool there. David Tennant takes on Neil Patrick Harris in the Doctor Who 60th Anniversary Specials trailer. So look at that. Um, let me see here. We already talked about the strike ending. So the WGA and the AMPTP have reached their deal. We also posted up the letter that the WGA members sent to um, their people after the deal was uh, reached. So tech, definitely take a look at that if you like. Um, the Golden Globes is adding two new categories to its upcoming January broadcast. It'll have cinematic and box office achievement and best performance in stand-up comedy. So pretty interesting. Um, I love the idea of the best performance in stand-up comedy. I think it should have its own category. There's a lot of stand-up specials. Cinematic and box office achievement is an interesting category, but basically if you look at the rules, it just had to make over a hundred million dollars, which isn't that big of a stretch to call, you know, a cinematic and box office achievement. Um, but Hey, it is what it is. I won't knock another category. So there you go. Um, we have the trailer for fingernails, which previews a sci-fi love story with Jesse Buckley and Jeremy Allen white. The trailer for Argyle should be coming out either tomorrow or the next day from Matthew Vaughn. This has been long overdue. He released a little teaser teaser today showing like, hey, it's coming. So keep your eyes out for that. We'll definitely post it once it drops. Argyle is his new uh, spy thriller starring Henry Cavill. So looking forward to that. Saturday Night Live might return to air in October as the strike is ending up. So um, I hope so, man. Let's get back to work. Uh, Emma Stone and Nathan Felder, their new comedy, The Curse, is coming to Showtime, which would be pretty interesting there uh, before the end of the year. The Star Trek Four writer confirms that the long-awaited sequel is still moving forward. Spirit Halloween, the movie, is going to hit streaming in October on Shudder, so keep your eyes out for that, and it will get a little theatrical release in some theaters across the U.S., 
Stephen King and Guillermo del Toro praised the movie No One Will Save You, the one I reviewed earlier tonight. Uh, very cool to see them kind of given praise. Also talking about how, you know, for a movie with really no dialogue, that it could keep your attention and keep the thrills going. So very cool that they came out to praise that movie. The Taylor Swift The Errors Tour movie is now going to get a worldwide theatrical release. That's right. This was only supposed to be in the U.S., but the rest of the world was ready for it. And uh, so now it'll get a worldwide release. This movie is going to make a shit ton of money. We have the trailer for May, December, which is Natalie Portman um, and Julianne Moore's new movie. We have the trailer for House of Dolls, which is a new slasher family reunion film. Uh, we have the trailer for the Enfield Poltergeist, which previews the real Conjuring story that inspired the Conjuring 2. So very cool. That's coming to Apple TV+. Plus. We have the trailer for Next Goal Wins, which is Taika Waititi's new sports dramedy. I am sad to say that Heels has been canceled. Stars has pulled the plug, not only on Heels, but also Run the World and Blind Spotting, along with another series they were going to do called The Venere of Samantha Bird that has been canceled. But yeah, Heels, Run the World, and Blind Spotting canceled. Really bummed about this. I love the show Heels. It just wrapped up its second season. And it wrapped it up with a big cliffhanger, which leaves us all hanging with no season three coming now. Uh, super bummer. This starts Stephen Amell. It was about uh, a little local wrestling company. It was a really good show, man. And I'm bummed that more people didn't watch it. I'm hoping, hoping, and I know this is a stretch, that maybe another streamer might save this show. But it probably won't. But I kind of had a feeling it was going to get canceled. Stars, I feel like if you're not one of the power shows, you get canceled pretty quick on Stars. So really, really unfortunate. We have the Magnum P.I. Season 5 Part 2 trailer, which previews its final episodes coming back to NBC here soon. We have the 30 Coin Season 2 trailer, which is for HBO's new mystery horror series. So check that out for Season 2 coming. Halloween, uh, Miramax is shopping the rights to the franchise's future. That's right. Uh, it sounds like some people are trying to bid on it to make it a TV show, which would be pretty interesting. I thought we were done with Halloween, but uh, it looks like it's going to come back once again. We have the Rick and Morty Season 7 trailer, so your first look at the new Adult Swim series with the new voices. Late night talk shows are looking to return in October as the strike is ending as well. So hopefully October will see a kick up in some stuff. An office reboot is supposedly underway by the original U.S. creator. That's right. I know a lot of people are like, why? You know, if it's an office comedy, this is a show that could be an anthology series that could really follow different offices in different industries. It doesn't have to be an exact reboot that we're following a, you know, Michael Scott and stuff like that. Right. It doesn't. So I think. I believe that that would be the direction they would take. I don't see the creator saying, I want to come back just to do the same thing over again. I feel like you could have a show like The Office in multiple workplace environments. So hopefully that's what they're doing. Pretty cool. We'll see where it goes. We have the trailer for Sick Girl, which stars Nina Dobrev. And this is her new movie coming out soon. So check out the trailer for that. It's a comedy. Saw X reactions are starting to hit and they're calling it a return to form for the horror franchise. I love the sound of that. That's exactly what we need. Would you like to play a game? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, very, very cool, man. Uh, we have some details on the writer's strike deal. So if you want to read all the breakdown of, of what transpired during the negotiations, check that out. Paw Patrol 3 is a go, baby. That's right. Set for a 2026 theatrical release. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, coming back for the third one. So there you go. And and I don't have any bigger news than that. So I'm going to wrap up the show at a little Paw Patrol. So we're right about that 32-minute mark as we wrap. So thank you so much once again for joining me on this new edition of Am I on the Air? I appreciate you. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you share this show with your friends and family. Anybody that loves TV and movies should be listening. Share it out. 
I'm available on all the streaming platforms. So if you do Apple Podcasts, give it there. If you do Spotify, do it there. iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music. I'm on everything. Google Podcast. You got no excuse. Subscribe to the show. Leave us a thumbs up. Leave us a five-star review. Whatever you can do. Amiontheair.com is the official page. Bookmark it. And, uh, you know, everything you need is right there. You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Follow us on X or Twitter at am I on the air or myself at DX Don Mega. And you could follow us at the same things over on threads. Um, everything social media is am I on the air. So TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, just search am I on the air, all one word, and you should be able to find us. No problemo. Uh, shout out to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio and the Pop Culture Pros. RedDragonsRadio.com, follow on Twitter at RedDragonsRadio, all one word, and follow the Pop Culture Pros at PopCulture underscore pros uh, for this podcast and many, many others that are amazing, and we thank them for always streaming us on demand. That'll do it for me this week. Oh, man, like I said, lots of movies hitting the theaters this weekend. I don't know what I'm going to get a chance to see. I'm thinking I'll probably see the creator Maybe I can get to Saw. I don't know, man. Schedule's really, really tight this weekend. So we'll see how it plays. But we'll be back next time to get you caught up. So take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all. Peace.